There's this myth, a myth that has left a scar on the Wii's legacy. And that myth is this narrative that Nintendo abandoned their hardcore fans. They abandoned their fans who stuck with them through N64 and Super Nintendo and GameCube, and they abandoned them. They screwed their fans. They screwed the hardcore gamers and left them out in the cold to get a quick buck from Wii Sports Granny. Well, I'm going to talk just about Nintendo in this video, because this is the specific narrative, is that Nintendo screwed over the, the hardcore gamers with the Wii. So, I'm going to talk about Nintendo published games and the casual games they've, they've published and the hardcore games they've published. And I am not going to use a fanboy land flame war definition of casual. I'm not going to consider a game casual because it's E-rated or because it isn't a shooter or because it's quirky or because it dares to use colors other than brown. That's not how I'm going to define hardcore and casual. I've prepared the most objective definitions I could come up with for hardcore slash traditional and for casual. Let's we'll start with hardcore. Hardcore, or traditional game. A video game whose play style and game mechanics appeal chiefly to or have been widely enjoyed by the traditional consumer demographic for video game consumption. That's a hardcore game. A casual game. A video game whose playstyle and mechanics are meant to appeal to an expanded audience, including and beyond the traditional demographic for video game consumption. That's going to be a casual game for the purpose of this video. So, and yes, there are some Nintendo published games that you could, you know, reasonably define them as casual, and yet Nintendo, the people who, the Nintendo gamers have been enjoying these games long before audience expansion and casual gaming even you know were even thought of games such as Mario Party and WarioWare who made those games popular the traditional market the hardcore market is what made those games popular meanwhile they haven't been a, a big success with the expanded audience who plays Wii Sports and Wii Fit so for the purpose of this I'm going to consider that a traditional title because traditional hardcore gamers have been playing those games long before this audience expansion uh, issue even uh, came about. So, going to do a list of traditional, hardcore, N Nintendo published Wii games. And yes, I am reading this from a list. If you're able to remember every Sony published game and every Microsoft published game from the seventh generation, then you should probably go to Las Vegas and become a professional casino gambler. Okay, let's start. Hardcore slash traditional Nintendo published games. Excite Truck, Zelda Twilight Princess, WarioWare Smooth Moves, Super Paper Mario, Mario Party 8, Pokemon Battle Revolution, Mario Strikers, Metroid Prime 3, Donkey Kong Barrel Blast, Battalion Wars Wii, Fire Emblem Radiant Dawn, Super Mario Galaxy, Super, Super Smash Bros. Brawl, Mario Kart Wii, Wario Land Shake It, Animal Crossing City Folk, Super Mario Sluggers, Punch Out, Metroid Prime Trilogy, New Super Mario Bros. Wii, Excite Box Trick Racing, Sin and Punishment Star Successor, Super Mario Galaxy 2, Samurai Warriors 3, Poke Park Wii, Metroid Other M, Kirby's Epic Yarn, Donkey Kong Country Returns, Mario Sports Mix, Monster Hunter Tri, Fling Smash, Xenoblade Chronicles, Kirby's Return to Dreamland, Zelda Skyward Sword, Fortune Street, Mario Party 9, and Rhythm Heaven. That is a total of 37 traditional slash hardcore games, the sorts of games that Peep, gamers on Nintendo systems have enjoyed on GameCube, on Game Boy Advance, on Nintendo 64 before this audience expansion campaign started into the casual space. So, going by our definition, now let's list all the Nintendo published casual games. Now this is just talking about Nintendo themselves, the stuff they've themselves published. Wii casual games. Wii Sports, Wii Sports Resort, Wii Play. We Play Motion, We Fit, We Fit Plus, We Music, We Party, Big Brain Academy, Endless Ocean. That is 10 games. That is 10 
casual, expanded audience Nintendo published Wii games, just 10, whereas they've released 37 traditional slash hardcore Wii games, the sorts of games that gamers have been playing on, on GameCube, on Nintendo 64, before audience expansion and casual gaming was even on the table. So, when we have 37 traditional Nintendo games and 10 Nintendo published casual games over the, the, court, the whole life of the system, it really makes it hard to understand how gamers, some of whom are we owners, saying that Nintendo screwed me, Nintendo's abandoned me for casual gamers. They've published 10 of these these casual games over the course of the system's lifespan, whereas they've published nearly 40 traditional games targeted to Nintendo consumers, Nintendo players. That means that for every casual game Nintendo's published throughout the Wii's lifespan, they've also published four traditional games. That's four to one. How is that abandoning the traditional hardcore market? I mean, let's take a look at each of these games. We have Wii Sports and Wii Play. Those were both effectively given away for free with the Wii console and with the Wii Remote. Big Brain Academy and Endless Ocean, those games went basically completely unnoticed by casual gamers, let alone the militant hardcore who's intent on listing every single casual game as a nail in Nintendo's coffin. So we have two games given away for free, two games that basically didn't even make a blip on the radar, and we have Wii Sports Resort and Wii Play Motion, and those are sequels that came out three and four years after their predecessors. And in the gaming world, three or four years for a sequel to a wildly popular game is like an eternity. So Nintendo waited three and four years to make sequels to their two most successful me games. And then there's Wii Fit Plus, which was basically an updated version of Wii Fit that wasn't even marketed as a sequel would normally be marketed, effectively replaced Wii Fit with Wii Fit Plus. And of all those Mii games, the only one to have been panned by professional reviewers as bad was Wii Music. So, with that all in mind, how could this narrative that Nintendo abandoned hardcore gamers in favor of casual gamers perpetuate. I mean, that, that whole topic, I can make a whole other video on that, but really in essence, it boils down to this. Gears of War and Killzone make noise on PS3, so those games come to characterize the PS3 as a whole in spite of them just being only one aspect of the PS3's total library. And we have games like Halo 3 and Halo Reach making noise on the Xbox 360, so those games come to characterize the Xbox as a whole in spite of them only being one aspect of the 360's total library. And so with Wii Sports and Wii Fit making noise on the Wii, so those games come to characterize the system as a whole in spite of them being only one subset of what the Wii has to offer. And then we have at E3 2007, 2008, and arguably 2009, Casual games took the spotlight at Nintendo's E3 media briefings of those years at a time when, the one time of the year, when core gamers from outside the Nintendo gaming circle have their eyes on Nintendo. So, they, based on those presentations, they perceived Nintendo to have nothing to offer them beyond these simplistic, casual experiences. So, on one hand, the E3 presentations were a failure to communicate on Nintendo's part, but the list of Nintendo published Wii games basically proves that Nintendo published four traditional games for their traditional established audience for every one game they made for their expanded casual audience. So, as far as Nintendo's concerned, the narrative that Nintendo betrayed their base of gamers that enjoyed Nintendo 64 and Nintendo GameCube by publishing Wii games only for the novice-centric casual market is a fantasy. Now, of course, there's much more to that story, and every myth does have an element of truth to it, but I will explicate that in future videos. So, thank you very much for watching.